Hey, what is going on, people? My name is Tanner, and welcome to Crypto Bible. Um, hope everyone is doing very well. Uh, as I said in yesterday's live stream, there will not be a live stream today. I am very busy, but I thought I would give you guys some updates along the way anyway. And um, today, I just wanted to cover a few things for you. And as per usual, Bitcoin is being adopted even more and more. Um, it is crazy the amount of news coming out of Bitcoin at the moment. It just seems like every single day there's some kind of different news coming out of a different country doing a different thing with it. Um, so, yeah, it's all about just waiting to see how everything will pan out. But, of course, there is still news coming out about Bitcoin. It is mainly about that. So, obviously, we have to cover it, seeing as it does obviously affect the majority of the market and any adoption that happens uh, happens for Bitcoin is good adoption because um, it would just obviously relate for every single other cryptocurrency, gives them a chance, makes them work harder. And um, yeah, I believe that the next few years we'll start to see a lot more things coming out of crypto in regards to actual adoption and uses within countries. And um, today, We've got the news story that Texas to allow state banks to hold Bitcoin. So I believe yesterday on the live stream, we were even talking about um, Miami looking for it to become a um, legal tender as well, just like El Salvador. Uh, I am still waiting on a proper good headline to come out for that, to cover that for you. But there were talks about it. Um, but then obviously today we've got Texas coming up. So I thought we'd take a quick look at this. Um, so it says that banks with a national charter can already custody crypto. According to the OCC, Texas says that's true of its state chartered banks as well. The Texas Department of Banking today issued a notice confirming that state chartered banks may store cryptocurrency on clients' behalf, provided they have adequate protocols in place for complying with the law. Though it seems like a big victory for the state's cryptocurrency firms and users, in the department's view, nothing has really changed. Texas state chartered banks have long provided their customers with safekeeping and custody services for a variety of assets, it wrote, while custody and safekeeping of virtual currencies will necessarily differ from that associated with more traditional assets. The Texas Department of Banking believes that the authority to provide these services with respect to virtual currencies already exists pursuant to Texas Finance Code 32. So there you go, guys, you know, more and more adoption coming through. That is basically what it is talking about. Um, and yeah, well, I just have to wait and see what comes out from that. I know the other day we even had news of um, the Bank of England saying that they want um, regulatory clarity for stable coins, cryptocurrency. So, uh, you know, one by one, there's little bits and pieces of news coming out, which uh, just seems to be building, you know, it's building pace as well. And, you know, the whole India thing as well we were talking about. India wants it to become a currency. Uh, they want to adopt it too. Um, Basel, Basel, wherever you want to call the country, um, you know, they're, they're there on it as well. So I, I suppose in the next few months, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how all of these things actually develop and, uh, you know, see if they do stay true to their word, just like El Salvador. And um, speaking of El Salvador, did you hear about what they've been doing? Using volcanoes as um, their energy source and power for mining Bitcoin. That is crazy. Seriously, that guy, man, I, I uh, you know, I, I judged that guy way too early. He's uh, he's pretty cool, isn't he? <laughs> he is pretty, pretty cool. The president of El Salvador He's a pretty cool guy, man. The way that guy's moving, I rate it. And, you know, the way he's, you know, coming across on social media as well, on like Twitter and stuff, he seems very cool. He's very community based. He seems like a people's person and the people do seem very happy. So, you know, fair enough to them. We're still waiting on the next country to follow suit. Obviously, we had the whole Paraguay, um, Argentina, Mexico, Brazil. Panama, etc. It's just about waiting to see who's going to follow suit next. And um, yeah, see what comes out of them and how they're going to actually uh, mine Bitcoin if they're going to go for it as well. See what their their plan is as well. El Salvador's is volcanoes. What will um, Panama's be? <laughs> so yeah, we'll wait and see. Um, but yeah, guys, the second thing that I wanted to cover today um, was actually still to do with El Salvador because um, obviously it is mainstream media right now. There's a lot of things going on there. And um, right now we've got this as well. The IMF plans to meet with El Salvador's president, potentially discussing move to adopt Bitcoin. OK, so the International Monetary Fund has previously spoken out against smaller nations like Marshall Land, Marshall Islands, recognizing a digital currency as a legal tender. 
And it goes on to say, the International Monetary Fund has said El Salvador's recent decision to make Bitcoin legal tender in the country may raise legal and financial concerns. So, you know, we're starting to get a little bit of FUD coming out now. All the good news has passed, right? Let's get back to reality, right? Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this develops. In a Thursday press briefing from the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, spokesperson Gary Rice, Jerry Rice, said the group was already in discussions with lawmakers in El Salvador over a loan to support the country's economy, having approved emergency funds related to the pandemic last year. However, Rice said that an IMF team would uh, would be meeting with President Nayib Bukele, the president of El Salvador, uh, today and implied crypto would be a likely topic for discussion, of course. Adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender raises a number of macroeconomic, financial and legal issues that require very careful analysis, said Rice. We are following developments closely and will continue our consultations with the authorities. Okay, so he says that he's um, often voiced his concerns about countries adopting the legal current, uh, the digital currency. So yeah, um, I suppose they're not out of it yet, but uh, you know, again, I just think it's a little bit of fun. There's nothing too, too much that's going to come out of that. I believe, in my personal opinion, obviously the market right now is just kind of steady. Uh, we're not seeing too much happen. Um, you know, I am still expecting the same thing: a slow grind up. Uh, and a lot of volatility along the way so that would basically be my stance and yeah guys that's basically going to conclude what I wanted to talk about today hopefully I'll get another video out for you guys later on today as well as I said there is no live stream at 6 30 today um, I will be coming back to the live streams on Monday um, I have graduation photos to go to for my girlfriend because they were cancelled last year due to covid so I've got to go and get ready for all of that. Um, but yeah, guys, other than that, I hope you do enjoy your day today and the weekend. The Euros are starting. You guys know already my money is all on Italy. Uh, let me know what your guys' thoughts are as well and who you are backing. And um, yeah, I will then reach back out to you guys on Monday. And hopefully I will have a few videos coming up for you over the weekend. No promises, but I'm working on a few things. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can make it happen. Otherwise, guys, please do have a good day. Have a very good weekend. Please like the video, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you know every time we upload a video. And guys, I will see you later. Take care.